bersih out. Ready and land looking out. Looking out to all that's ahead. When every heart confesses your name. We're pressing on towards the day. We're never gonna stop. Come on, sing it out. We're never gonna stop. Letting go of every mistake. Knowing all the chains of restraints. And all the way remain the passion for your name. Burning as we run this race. We're never gonna stop. We're never gonna stop No, no, we're never gonna stop We're never gonna stop See it up! We are running We're chasing after all that you are We are running Cause all that you are is all that we want Step compelled by your grace. We're taking up a cross, no matter what it costs. We give it all to go your way. We never gonna stop. We never gonna stop. Yeah, we are running. We're chasing after all that you are. We are running. We want, we're running. We're chasing after all that you are. We are running. The song that you are is song that we want now. Whoa. We draw to watch your life Desperate we seek to know you more and more Further we look beyond ourselves Do you love, do you love Sing onwards Desperate we seek to know you more and more Further we look beyond ourselves Do you love, do you love Cause we are one Say it out. Chasing after all that you are, we are running. Cause all that you are is all that we want. We're running. We're chasing after all that you are, we are running. Cause all that you are is all that we want now. desire to give you praise so that God will lead on everything before your feet. All our crowns, God, we lay down before your feet. Our lives, our plans, our dreams, God, we lay down before your feet. Receive our worship today, God. Washing my feet, 
Let me read to you 
Luke chapter 18, verses 35 to 43. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging. When he heard the crowd going by, he asked what was happening. They told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. He called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. Those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. When he came near, Jesus asked him, What do you want me to do for you? Lord, I want to see, he replied. Jesus said to him, Receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. Immediately, he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. When all the people saw it, they also praised God. There is this man who was blind since birth and he was in desperate situation. What is blindness? What does it do to us? Blindness limits our freedom. We cannot go to places and fulfill our, our goals and our purposes when we are blind. When we are blind, we want to help others but we cannot do as much. There is um, limitation in our freedom there is limitation in what we can do because of our blindness. And this blind beggar did not want to remain like that. He did not want to remain blinded. He wanted his sight. And when he, he heard Jesus coming, he shouted at the top of his voice in order to be heard. But you know what? Jesus heard him. Even though people wanted to, wanted to stop him, he kept on shouting. Jesus heard him and asked him, what he wants him to, what he wants from Jesus and this blind said i want my sight how about us today what is that thing that we are crying out to god for the past years or for the long time we have been crying for this a relationship or maybe lack or maybe oppression from the evil one or maybe depression or whatever sickness and relational dysfunction that we have like this man like this blind beggar he cried out because he didn't want to remain like that. He didn't want to remain in that situation. Same thing with us, brothers and sisters. We can cry out to God right now. Even at the time of our worship, even at the time of our prayer, we cry out to God. And you know what? Nothing is impossible with Jesus. The Bible says that immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. We can come to God and expect for the impossible. Jesus is faithful. Jesus is powerful. As we cry out to him, he will change our situations. He will heal us. He will provide for whatever we're asking of him. Let's pray right now. Lord, we thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, that you are powerful and mighty, Lord God. And Lord, it is your will, Lord God, for us to be healed. It is your will, Lord God, for us, Lord God, Lord, to be turned, Lord God, to, Lord God, it's your will to turn our situations around, oh God. And I pray for my brothers and sisters right now, oh God, that whatever they're praying for, Lord God, maybe for the long time already, Lord God. But Lord, I thank you that even as we persevere, even as we, Lord God, become tenacious, Lord God, keep on calling to you, praying to you, Lord God. Lord, we thank you that you hear our prayers. And like this blind man, Lord God, immediately you have granted his sight. And Lord, we also believe, Lord, for our miracles. We also believe for our breakthroughs, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that in our lives, Lord God, you are our hope, our living hope. The God who gives us, Lord God, the God who provides, the God who heals, Lord God, those who are sick right now. Lord, we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. Bless Sunday, everyone. Welcome to Victory to Gigarao online Sunday worship service. We are so happy to have you join our worship service today. And also, we would like to remind you that we have our on-site Sunday worship services at 8 a.m., 10 a.m., and 4 p.m. every Sunday here at our worship hall, third floor of Victory to Gigarao Building, Bagay Road. So we highly encourage you to meet with us, fellowship with us, and let us worship together face to face. Today, we are now on the third week of our preaching series entitled, We, Your People. The church is God's people. He is building it and designed it in such a way that where we can have a shared faith, shared lives, shared hope, and shared mission. 
as His people, we will be defined according to this identity and leave this out as His light to the world. So to preach to us the third week of this series entitled Shared Longing and Shared Hope, let us all welcome our senior pastor, Pastor Ross Resvelio. We all people, all together, bring you honor, give you reverence, standing as one well in your presence. This is your church, God built it. This is your church, God built it. Blessed Sunday, everyone. Again, we would like to welcome you to our Victory Online Worship Service. Kamusta na po tayo dyan? I hope that you're all doing good, believing uh, that the Lord will continually bless you and continually uh, minister to your life. Well, uh, today we're going to continue our preaching series. We have entitled, We Your People. This is our third uh, Sunday. Now, just a recap, two Sundays ago, we talked about uh, Jesus Christ as being the chief cornerstone or the foundation of the church. Last Sunday, we talked about the fellowship or the shared lives in the church. And today, we would like to look at uh, another aspect of the church, which is the message of the church. And our text this Sunday is found in Romans chapter 1, verse 16. It says here, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jews first and also to the Greek. Let us all bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we would like to praise and thank you for your great, great love for all of us. I pray, O oh God, that we will have that uh, uh, courage and that eagerness to share the good news to others so that they too may be saved. Father, we give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. So, as I have said, today we will talk about the message of the church. Ano ho ba talaga ang mensahe natin para sa uh, mundo, no? as, as, as a church? Now, in the church, we talk about the message of prosperity, we talk about the message of, well, healing, the message of God's plan for your life. We also talk about uh, spiritual warfare or the end times. And we all love those uh, preaching and messages. But what is the core message of the church to the world? And, uh, I, I, and our goal this Sunday is, is for us to have an understanding of that message and for us no, to be like Apostle Paul in his attitude toward the message of the church. Now, sabi rito, no? for I am not ashamed of the gospel. Now, mapapansin natin dito that um, Apostle Paul was saying to the readers that he was not ashamed of the gospel. Well, the message of the church is a gospel. We will talk about that le later. But kita natin dito that Apostle Paul had this attitude towards, a good attitude towards the gospel. He said, I am not ashamed. Hindi daw siya nahihiya sa Ebanghelyo ng Diyos. And we will see later why. Pero, no, gusto ko din pong ipakita sa inyo that even before verse 16, if you're going to look at uh, verse uh, 15 and 16, we see that there was a progression of uh, his attitude, no, his uh, positive attitude towards uh, the preaching of the gospel. Now, in verse 14, he said, I am under obligation both to Greeks and to the barbarians, both to the wise and to the foolish. Take note of the phrase, under obligation. Naintindihan po ni Apostle Paul that as regards the gospel, he is under obligation. Well, looking at uh, the book of Matthew before the Lord Jesus ascended, 
He already made this command, no? For us to go into the nations and practically well uh, preaching the gospel. Now here he understood that he is under obligation that as a Christian, as a believer, he is under obligation to preach the gospel. Sana tayo din po naintindihan natin that this is not a suggestion or an option. This is not only for the full-time staff, but every believer or every Christian should understand that they must preach the gospel. And we will see again later why is it important to preach the gospel. Then in verse 15, there was a progression. Hindi na lang po, un, hindi na, hindi na lang po obligasyon ang tingin niya sa gospel. Sabi niya rito, So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. He was not seeing the preaching of the gospel as an obligation now, but there was already an eagerness. Nagkakaroon na siya ng kasiyahan in preaching the gospel. Maybe he, he saw the change, the transformation in the lives of people when he preaches the word to them and they receive the, the word of God. Now he is eager, he's excited to preach the gospel. And I hope that we will reach that point where we see the preaching of the gospel, not, not just an obligation, but we are excited, that we are eager that we are really looking for opportunities to share the gospel to people. And then in verse 16, he said, I am not ashamed of the gospel. Now, Apostle Paul understood that uh, in preaching the gospel, he will, be, he will be encountering some obstacles, some opposition from people. But despite all those things, those, despite all those experiences, he said, I am not ashamed. Hindi ako nahihiya. Naintindihan niya kasi na ngayon, no, in preaching the gospel, hindi lahat tatanggap, hindi lahat maniniwala. In fact, there will be those that will uh, uh, insult him no, or ridicule him. But he said, I am not ashamed. So sana ganun din po tayo na hindi tayo mahihiya no, in preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ kahit merong opposition, kahit pinagtatawanan tayo no because at that time no uh, people were also uh, looking at the gospel as something uh, foolish no kaya pinagtatawanan din si apostle paul yung iba naman galit because of course uh, apostle paul in preaching the gospel has to preach also about dying to self and to to receive jesus and so many were also angry at him but he said, no, I will continue. I will not be ashamed. So we will look at three things why Apostle Paul said, I am under obligation, I am eager, and I'm not ashamed. No? And we all know that the, the message is the gospel. Now let me just uh, tell you this, church, that when we say the gospel, it comes from the Greek word evangelion, which means good news. No mga panahon na yon, ang gospel it's not just really it's not just really an exclusive religious term. It's being used to declare good news. Pag merong uh, bagong em, uh, emperor o oh, yon no, uh, sinasabing gospel yon. Pag sila nananalo sa gera, gospel ang tawag nila doon, good news yon. Kaya nga tayo yung word na evangelism no, do natin nakukuha yon sa word na evangelion. No, it's it's proclaiming the good news. And when we say the good news, it talks about the life, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus that will bring forgiveness, restoration, and salvation for mankind. And that is why dito makita natin that Apostle Paul was saying that he was eager and not ashamed of that message of the church as i have said a while ago no marami tayong naririnig na message sa church and they're all good they're all uh, encouraging and uh, uh, worth uh, listening to because it edifies and it gives us um, a deeper revelation of the bible but let us not forget the core message of the church to the world and that is the gospel no and when we say the gospel we're not just talking about well, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, which we, well, the first 
books in the New Testament, which we call gospel, it's about the life, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus that will bring forgiveness, restoration, and salvation. In fact, Pastor Rice Brooks said that the gospel is the good news that God became man in Jesus Christ. He lived the life we should have lived and died the death we should have died in our place. Three days later, He rose from the dead, proving that He is the Son of God and offering the gift of salvation to those who repent and believe in Him. Now, as the first point that I want to make is that the gospel is good news. He is not ashamed. In fact, he is eager to preach the gospel because it is good news. As I have said, noong mga panahon na yon, pag sinabi mong gospel, it's good news. But to Apostle Paul, that good news is not just the installation of a new uh, emperor or uh, uh, just winning a battle. To him, the gospel is the life of the Lord Jesus Christ. Because he understood that through the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, people will be transformed and people will have salvation. No? Now, let me just uh, tell you a story about an Austrian violinist. Ang pangalan niya si Fritz Kreisler. Traveling from one city to another, he saw a beautiful violin being sold but very expensive. Kasi itong si Fritz uh, Kreisler ay marunong ang tumugtog ng violin. So sinabi niya, no, he asked the seller if he can come back to buy it once he gets the money. So siyempre, dahil sa mahal, kailangan mag-ipon itong uh, violinist. And so after many years, he went back only to find out it was sold to a collector. E, siyempre, hindi naman pwedeng hintayin nung uh, uh, seller Si Fritz, no? dahil nga ilang taon na, so binenta. But he wanted to find the buyer. And so he found the collector and asked if he can buy. Kasi siyempre, interesado talaga si Fritz doon sa violin. And of course, he's offering a bigger amount of money than the original purchase price. Pero sabi ng collector, no. no? He doesn't want He doesn't need money because he's going to put uh, the violin in a museum. So medyo nalungkot si Fritz kasi talagang ayaw ibigay o ibenta ng collector. Pero ang sabi ni Fritz Kreisler, can I play it one final time? Pwede ko bang patugtugin yung violin na yan? Just, just one more time, one final time bago nyo po ilagay sa museum. You know, Kumayag yung collector and uh, while uh, Fritz was playing the violin, biglang napaiyak no, yung collector sa sobrang ganda ng tugtog uh, ng violin. And of course, sa sobrang galing din ni Fritz uh, Chrysler. No? And then, this is what he said. Sabi niya, I have no right to keep it to myself. Sabi niya, okay, ibibigay ko na sa'yo yan. Hindi mo na babayaran. It's yours. It's yours. Pero merong condition. It's yours to take it into the world and let the people hear it. Ibinibigay ko na yung violin na yan, huwag mo nang bayaran, pero dapat no, na dalin mo sa buong mundo and let the people hear it. You know, the gospel is like that. It's good news. It is something that can bring uh, freedom no, to people. And that is why uh, we have to be eager. We should not be ashamed. And, you know, at times we have to understand that it is our obligation to share the good news. Let's not keep it to ourselves. Because when we keep it to ourselves, sad to say, we become selfish. It, the gospel is not only for us, but also for others, as we will see later. So we have to share the good news. The gospel, the life, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus is good news. It will bring forgiveness, restoration, and salvation to people. Now, uh, looking at uh, 
the gospel as uh, good news, dapat maintindihan din kasi natin, ano, bakit nagiging good news? Kung may good news, malamang may bad news. And from the scripture, again, in the book of Romans, Apostle Paul explained that clearly in his letter to the people of uh, Rome. No? Ang sabi doon sa Romans chapter 1, verse 18, from the very beginning, he said, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who by their unrighteousness suppress the truth. Apostle Paul explained that we are all unrighteous, that we, were, we, we are all ungodly. No? Hindi lang sa mga tao sa Rome, pero sa ating lahat. You know, that time, people understood that. Even in history, it's written that you know, although they were strong in uh, military terms, they were weak in their morals. In fact, that's one of the reasons of the fall of Rome because of their morality. No? At uh, pati na rin yung values nila sa family. So they understood that. No? And uh, Apostle Paul explained that all men are ungodly, unrighteous. Sabi nga sa Romans chapter 3, explaining further, verse 23, he said, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Lahat tayo, no exemption, lahat tayo ay nagkasala. Kaya nga, we cannot say, you know, ako hindi siya nagkasala. Hindi, all of us, maliit man o malaki, lahat tayo nagkasala. And we all have fallen short of the glory of God. Bitin, no? Nahulog tayo. Kumbaga, ay, pa, parang uh, we're well, trying our best to, to go to God. Pero bitin, no? we have uh, fall short of the glory of God. So that's the problem. No, we, we, well, in Romans chapter 6, verse 20, he said plainly, for the wages of sin is death. Dahil lahat tayo ay, ay, ay ungodly and unrighteous. Lahat tayo ay nagkasala. Ang sabi rito, ang kabayaran ng kasalanan ay kamatayan. So that's the problem. But the good news is that in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, it says, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is why we say that the gospel is good news. That the life, the death, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus is good news because it will bring salvation and it will uh, give us eternal life. And it says here, it's the free gift of God. Indeed, we don't have to earn it because we cannot earn it. That's the problem. We want to be saved, but we cannot save ourselves. Kahit na po, an- ano pang gawin nating kabutihan, ang realidad po ay lahat tayo ay nagkasala. Kaya nga, ang Panginoong Jesus, He paid the penalty of our sins through His death on the cross and He resurrected so that we may have eternal life with Him. So that's the first point. No? The gospel is good news. We should be eager. We should not be ashamed. And we have to understand it's our obligation as a church to proclaim the message of salvation. The second point is this. The gospel is God's power. Looking at our uh, verse, it says, Therefore, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation. It's the power of God. The, the gospel is not just an ordinary message. It is not just an ordinary story. It is something supernatural. You know? it, 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 it's a miracle no? it, and it produces a miracle. It says here, it is the power of God. It is the power of God, meaning it is an act of God that He initiated and that the result will uh, bring forth uh, the reason it was sent. So when we proclaim the gospel, when we share the gospel, we have to understand this, that it is the power of God. Power to do what? For the salvation of people. Yan ang ginawa ng Diyos, no? Yan ang plinano ng Diyos para sa kaligtasan ng sanlibutan. From, from the very beginning in the book of Genesis, we already see this plan. The plan of uh, the Lord Jesus coming and dying uh, to save man. And it is the power of God. No? Uh, it is impossible to, to save ourselves. 
Because all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. No one is qualified to save, the, to save us. No one can save people. No, the animal sacrifices in the Old Testament, there were only temporary sacrifices to cover our sins, but not to remove the sinful nature of, uh, uh, of our hearts. And that is why here, Apostle Paul describes it as the power of God. Not only to forgive sins, because, you know, through the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, He paid the penalty of our sins. Kahit pa gaano kalaki ang kasalanan mo, kahit gaano pa karami ang kasalanan mo, kapatid, binayaran nyo ng Panginoong Jesus no, sa Cruz. He paid the penalty of our sins. That's why it's good news. Many are people Many people are living in guilt and uh, in, in in guilt and condemnation, but the Lord Jesus paid the penalty of our sins, removed that guilt and condemnation, so that we can live righteous lives and uh, also enjoy the freedom from the bondage of sin. It's the power of God because it transforms lives. No, nagbabago ang buhay ng mga tao pag sila tumatanggap ng Ibanghelyo. Nakikita natin, no, from glory to glory. That is why, you know, Apostle Paul also said, no, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. It is, it is um, through the gospel that we can have salvation. Of course, sino ba naman ang ayaw maligtas? No? Alam natin na pag tayo namatay, no, Either we go to heaven or we go to hell. But praise God, the Lord promised that as we believe in Him, we will have eternal life. We will have salvation. And third point I want to make, church, is this. The gospel is given to everyone. Sabi dito, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes. You know, I like this word everyone it is very inclusive the gospel is inclusive no ka sabi dito ang gospel ang good news ay para sa lahat para sa lahat na naniniwala babae ka man o lalaki matanda ka man o bata anuman ang kasarian mo anuman ang uh, uh, race mo o katayuan mo sa buhay mayaman man o mahirap kahit sino ay pwedeng maligtas. No? Kaya nga, the third point is that the, the gospel is given to everyone. Lahat no? pwedeng maligtas. No? Lahat pwedeng mag-benefit sa good news. Everyone who believes. Kaya nga, you know, kapatid, kung ikaw nanunod ngayon at na-realize na- mo that you're living in sin, that you don't have the Lord Jesus in your life, And you're ashamed because uh, of the sins that you have committed. You, you know, you, you're living in guilt and condemnation. The good news is that the Lord Jesus died for you. That, he, that uh, he has already paid the penalty of your sins. And that can be given to you freely. No? The only thing you have to do is believe. Hindi tinitingnan ni Lord kung gaano kadami ang kasalanan mo. Hindi tinitingnan ni Lord kung ano... Ano ang estado mo sa buhay? Because the gospel is for everyone. Na kahit na ikaw ay ordinaryong tao lang, you can be saved. You can benefit from the gospel. No? So makikita natin dito that uh, it is inclusive. No? It is for all people and for all nations. No? Sabi sa John 3.16, For God so loved the world. He did not say he loved, you know, a, a, a particular race or a particular gender, but you know, or a particular sector. No, he said, "For God so loved the world, mahal na mahal niya lahat ng tao, at kaya siya na matay para sa ating lahat." But the question is, are we going to believe? Are we going to accept this good news? No, we have to also know our part in this. That although the Lord Jesus is already offering this free gift, and you know, uh, let me tell you that He, you know, that the Lord uses His people 
his sons and daughters, his children, to share this good news. The question is, are we going to receive it? I hope that if you're right now here and you haven't received Jesus yet in your life as your Lord and Savior, we will, we, you will you know, humble yourself and receive the gospel. You know, as I start to close, here we also see that uh, we can grow in our, in our faith with the Lord as we continue to share the gospel. You know, the gospel is not the ABC of Christianity. It's the A to Z and beyond of Christianity. Misa siya sabi natin, basic naman yan. Kasi lagi natin naririnig. Pero importante yun. Dahil ka, tulad ng sabi ng isang pastor, we have to continually, you know, every day, daily meditate on the gospel. Because it will help us grow. When, when we look at the life of Jesus, His obedience, His, His purity and holiness, when we look at His uh, death, that He was willing to suffer to the point of death, we will not complain, we will not grumble, but we will also share in the sufferings of Christ in this, in this life. And then when we look at His resurrection, it gives us hope. It gives us security knowing that God is in control, that the God that we serve is alive, that He can move and intervene in our circumstances and bring us victory and you know, uh, answer our prayers and our requests. So, also when we share the gospel, something happens also in our hearts. Mapapansin nyo, no, na pag tayo nagsishare ng gospel, the Lord is also ministering to our hearts. And maybe, you know, maybe encouraging us or even uh, correcting us when we share the gospel. Because the gospel has the power to change people and to bring salvation to all men. So, if you want to grow church, continually share the gospel. Because hindi lang po nagbe-benefit at nabibless yung inyong uh, kausap, kundi mismo kayo as you share the gospel and as you um, think it in your mind, something supernatural happens in your life and you grow in your faith. So, as I close church, the first question is this. Do you want to receive Jesus? And if you haven't received Jesus, I want to pray for you that you will accept Jesus in your heart. Believe in Him as your Lord and Savior. Let us pray. If you're that person, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, but I am sorry for my sins. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross to pay the penalty of my sins so that I may be forgiven and have eternal life. Lord Jesus, I accept you into my heart as my Lord, my Master, and my Savior. And I make a decision today to follow you for the rest of my life. Let me pray for you. Heavenly Father, thank you for these people that have received Jesus into their hearts. I pray that you continually move in their, in their lives as they start this new journey with you. Lord Jesus, I pray that you bless their newfound relationship with you and I pray that they will grow and mature in Jesus' name. Second people I want to pray for, God wants to use you. Pero parang feeling mo, parang hindi mo kaya, remember Acts 1.8 that He has given us power to be witnesses. That when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you you will be endowed with power from on high to be a witness, meaning to share the good news, to share the gospel. Let me pray for you. Lord, I pray for my brothers and sisters that they will have the courage and the boldness to share the gospel. Lord, we know that the enemy will try uh, his best to stop us in declaring the good news but Father, I pray that you empower each and every one of us through the Holy Spirit so that we will be bold and courageous and lovingly share the good news that Jesus, you love them so much that you died on the cross that as they believe and receive you into their hearts, they will experience forgiveness and have eternal life. Lord, thank you that this year, that as we proclaim the message 
of the church to the world, people will experience your goodness and we will also see revival come in our city. Lord, we thank you. We give you all the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Brothers and sisters, we're going to have our communion today to, to remind ourselves of that great sacrifice that Jesus has made on the cross to pay the penalty for all our sins and for the forgiveness of all our iniquities. Because of His sacrificial death on the cross, we can stand here today before God, righteous and holy because of His finished work on the cross. Let me read to you 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. It says here, For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night He was betrayed, took bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, He took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. So let us, let us partake of the bread, the body of Christ broken for us. Thanks be to God. Let us partake of the cup, the blood of Jesus poured out for us. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross. To pay the penalty for our sins and for our iniquities to be forgiven. Thank you Jesus, because of your body being broken on the cross, we have been made whole. Thank you, Jesus, that through the shedding of your blood, our sins have been forgiven and we have entered a new covenant with you. Thank you that even through your stripes, we have been healed not only of our sins, Lord, but even our illnesses and sicknesses. Lord Jesus, we give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Your name. 
the name of Bible names. Name of Bible names. Oh, the name of Jesus. It's the name we can live for. Oh, God. Now we say death could not hold you. The bell tore before you. You silenced the boss. For our tithes and offering, let me lead you to Psalm 112, verses 1 to 3 of the ESV version. Praise the Lord. Blessed is the man who, who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His offspring will be mighty in the land. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Those who fear the Lord and delight in doing his commands will be happy and wealthy. Provisions will come into his house, and their children will be successful and be blessed. I hope that you are encouraged to give. Let us pray. Lord, we want to thank you once again for this wonderful day. Thank you for the provisions that you had given us the past days, the past weeks, Lord God, and also the protection that you are always giving us. Father, we continually ask once again for your provision to come each and every was and into our family, Lord God, and that you will gonna provide everything that we need for this uh, season, yung mga pang tuition, mga pang, pang groceries, and everything that we need in our daily lives. Father, we thank you for your generosity in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There are three ways to, for you to give your tithes and offerings. First is by dropping your tithes and offerings from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. at Lighthouse Luna Street, second floor of the home and office furniture, and at the Victory Building Bagay Road, second floor. Second, you can give through direct deposit or bank transfer to, to, to our land bank to Gigarao and UCPB. Details are being flashed on the screen. And third, you can also give through GCash just scan the code, flash, and send a screenshot of the transaction done.
through private message to Victory to Gigarao. The giving of tithes and offerings are for Victory members only. And if you are a guest, you are not obliged to give. But if you wish to do so, we pray that God will bless you. Church, as we end our uh, Sunday worship service, let me declare this prayer of blessing to all of you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. Have a great week in Jesus' name. A quick shout out to my mom. Hi, mom. What's <laughs> up? Welcome to Kids Church for All Ages. And also, shout out to my huddle group, Iofi, who is now in Hong Kong. Also, to Chaskatan and Trisha. Hello. Yes, sir. What's up, guys? Now, our time in Caleraya is almost coming to an end as we are in the last week of our series called Never, Never Too young. young. Today, we will talk about the young man named. Timothy. Oh, Timothy. I know a guy named Timothy. He's, he's a decent guy. <laughs> Before we get into that, it's time for... Game, Game time! time! Woo! For the very last time this month, let's meet our teams. Let's go, Wild Wolverines! Woo! Let's also call on the legendary... Lion! Come here, come here. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's go, Lions. Okay, now for my team, Wild Wolverines, we have Teacher Carrie. Woo! Teacher Nikki, come here, go in front. Woo! Teacher Kami. Woo! And Teacher Maxine. And of course, of course, of course, of course, for the legendary Lions, we have Teacher Kiko, Teacher JC, Teacher J, Judah, and Pastor. Adrian. Yes, sir. This week, we will undergo some rigorous training here on the obstacle course of Caleraya Resort. The team must go through these obstacles on our back. Yes, sir. Together. Oh, man, that's really hard. Yes. The team that completes the whole course first wins. Remember, every single member must be able to complete the obstacle course. Every yes, sir. Let's go, Legendary Alliance. Let's go. Woo! Okay, and now it's time for Game Time!
Oh my goodness, the obstacle course was so hard. Oh, yeah. That is why Wild and Wolverines definitely deserve Yay! to win. The, the teamwork was great. We, yeah. um, Legendary Lions, could definitely learn a lesson or two. Congratulations, Teacher Annika. Thank you, guys. And great win. job, Legendary Lions. Uh, it's really hard. I, I had fun watching you guys. I had fun <laughs> failing. It's been a nice 15 minutes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, you know, Teacher, when Paul was writing to Timothy, he mentioned something about physical training too. Yeah, and he said, training your body helps you in some ways, but serving God helps you in every way. It gives blessings in this life and in the future life too. That's very well said, Teacher Annika. No matter how young you are, you can always start to serve God. We'll talk about this more after our time of worship. worship. Dear Abba Father, thank you for this wonderful day that you have made. Thank you for the time that we can get to worship you and learn more about you. I pray that you would open our hearts and our minds to learn 
who you really are and how much you love us. And I pray that as we learn the love and receive the love that you have for us, give us the grace to love the people around us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Another way we can worship God is through our giving. So you may give your tithes and offering by following the instructions flashed on the screen. time with teacher Justine. This week we are talking about a young man named Timothy. The young preacher. Around five years after Jesus died and came back to life, there was a man named Paul, who you might know, who turned away from putting Christians to death and became a Christian himself. He dedicated the rest of his life to preaching the gospel and making Christ known. On his first missionary trip, he met a young man named Timothy. Now this Timothy was very familiar with the stories of God and the stories of God's people. Timothy meant honoring God. And his grandmother Lois and his mother Eunice taught him the scriptures from the time he was just a wee little boy. The Apostle Paul chose Timothy when he got older, as young as he was, to follow him as a leader and help him labor in the kingdom of God. Paul taught him many things, like leading churches, what deacons were, and important lessons on taking care of the churches. While they were working far, far away from each other, Paul sent Timothy this letter. Timothy, you are like a son to me. I'm giving you a command that is all about the prophecies that were given about you back in the past. With all that happens around you, I tell you, fight the good fight of faith. Continue to have faith and do what you know is right, even when others do not. Some people have not done this, and now their faith has been destroyed. It's hard to keep the faith and continue doing what is right, especially when it's not the popular thing to do and when it's not the easy thing to do. But I believe in you, Timothy, Paul wrote. As young as you are, you can do what God has called you to do. And that is exactly what Timothy did. Paul knew that being a Christian was hard. But God used Timothy to show that even when it is hard, God makes it possible. This is the story of Timothy and how God used this young man to lead his churches. Remember kids, you are never too young for God to use you to do mighty things through you. See you guys next time on Storytime with Teacher Justine. Bye kids! We are now on the last week of our series, Never Too Young. And this week, we are going to talk about a guy named Timothy. So, once upon a time in the city of Lystra, Paul met a young man named Timothy. The other Christians who knew Timothy only had good things to say about him. Now, Paul took a great interest in him and mentored him for many years. Now, when Timothy was ready, Paul sent him on a mission trip to the church of Ephesus. In his church, Paul learned that the elders and the church leaders were teaching wrong things to the people. Timothy's mission was to be a pastor to the church and lead them into the correct teachings of Jesus. Now in Paul's first letter to Timothy, he gave some instructions that would help him in his mission trip. Now let's read from 1 Timothy 4. 6 to 10 it says there, If you explain these things to the brothers and sisters, Timothy, you will be a worthy servant of Christ Jesus, one who is nourished by the message of faith and a good teaching that you have followed. Now, do not waste time arguing over godless ideas and old wives' tales. Instead, train yourself to be godly. Physical training is good, but yes. Training for godliness is much better. Promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Now, this is a trustworthy saying, and everyone 
should accept it. This is why we work hard and continue to struggle. For our hope is in the living God, who is the Savior of all people and particularly of all believers. Now, the things that Paul wanted Timothy to explain to the church in Ephesus were the correct teachings of Jesus. But he also warned Timothy to stay away from arguing with people who don't want to listen. So instead of wasting time and arguing and picking fights, Paul wanted Timothy to reign in godliness. What does training look like? Come on, show me them muscles. Show me them big muscles. There you go. All right, so Paul wanted Timothy to train in godliness. And not only that, Timothy was also able to teach everyone to do the same as well. Mm. It actually says in 1 Timothy 4, 11 to 12, it says there, teach these things and insist that everyone learn them. Don't let anyone think less of you because you are young. Be an example to all believers. I want you to say that to your seatmate one more time. Be an example. Come on, let me hear it one more time. Be an example to all believers in what you say, in the way you live, and in your love, your faith, and your purity. So, for all of these things that I'm saying right now, what is my point? The point is this. I will start training for godliness today so that I may be an example to others. We ought to be examples to others. Now, godliness was mentioned a lot of times in 1 Timothy. This means that it is something that's really important. 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 But what is godliness anyway? Mm. Does your seatmate know what godliness is? All right, godliness is having so much honor and respect for God in our hearts that it actually reflects and shows in our words and actions. We can practice and train in godliness through singing songs of worship or even attending church every Sunday or much more important, reading the Bible and praying every day. Guys, the hardest way to practice godliness is probably being willing to be everything God says, even when it goes against what we feel or want. For example, you might want to fight with your brother or sister because they said something mean to you. And just like what Paul told Timothy, don't waste your time arguing. Said, tell him or her in a firm voice that it is wrong to be mean, but that you forgive him or her. Now that is training for godliness. You are doing something that is difficult, but it is the right thing to do. So look at your seatmate and say, do what is right. As you train in godliness and exhibit it, people will notice you and they will emulate you or copy you. Now don't ever think that you, 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 yes, you, don't ever think that you are too young for people to follow. Because as you choose to always do the right thing, even adults will be convicted towards godliness as well. Even the adults themselves will follow you because you are doing what is right. And God sees your heart. Remember, people will copy you. People will emulate you. So will you either be a good example or a bad one? That's a big question. And God is saying, my son, my daughter, Follow my teachings. Look at my word. Read the Bible. Be like me and you will live a better life. Be like Timothy. He followed God. He followed the teachings. And here's the thing. To the parents watching, you can train in godliness together with your children. Listen to Christian songs. Attend worship services every weekend. And you can even volunteer for the church. We also have a tool to help you disciple your children. We have our family devotional. So for those watching online, you can download the printable version in the link in the description box. And on-site attendees can also get a copy at the registration area from the Kids Church staff. Here's a power truth for this month. God can do mighty things through me. Say that. Say that one more time, kids. Say that one more time. God can do mighty things through me, through you. 
And it says in our power verse, do not let anyone look down on you because you are young. But by your conversation, your conduct, your love, your faith, and your purity, be an example to those who hold the faith. You are young Do not let anyone look down on you By a conversation The conduct you love And your purity Be an example To those who hold the faith Be an example To those you are young do not let anyone look down on you by a conversation the conduct you love and your purity be an example to those who hold the faith be an example Even Jesus, who is fully man and fully God, practiced godliness. He spent hours praying to God and teaching others God's truth. He welcomed the children, the poor, the orphan, the needy. He didn't even break any law of the land or law of God. He lived a perfect life. And if there is someone we want to follow in ways of godliness, there is no one better to emulate than Jesus. Why don't we pray? Lord, thank you for this wonderful day that you've given all of us to listen to your word. Lord, we pray that as we read your word, we get to know you more, we get to understand you, we get to see how you treated the people around you. You are the greatest example that we ought to follow. And we pray, Lord, that as we seek your word, as we delight in you, will be the same as you are. We will be Christ-like in all of the actions that we do. But grant us wisdom. Grant us the ability to be like you, to follow you, and that our lives would be great examples 
not bad ones. Our lives will be great examples to the people around us, even people who are older than us. We are never too young. Thank you, Lord, for that wonderful reminder because you're the one guiding us, protecting us. May our lives be a great example to the people around us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Reminding you that serving God helps you in every way. As young as we are, we need to train ourselves to practice godliness and serving God just as Timothy served God in his life. Now for our family con, the question is... Kids, it's me again, Teacher Nikki. Hi, Teacher Nikki. Hello, Ben. And shout out to the niece and nephew of Teacher Sandy, Don Zion and Krishana King. Hello. Well, today, we learned that we can start training for godliness as young as we are so we can be examples to others. That's why we're making these mini barbels. Ooh. Um, hmm. Do you have the materials ready, Ben? Um, just a sec. <laughs> okay, kids. For this craft, we will need two board papers. I'm using black so it looks like the real thing. Ooh. A big round object, and I'm using this CD. And a smaller round object. I'll use the inside of this tape. White paper, scissors, a marker, or crayons and regular tape. You can use glue or double-sided tape too if you want. Now kids, let's get crafting! Alright! Using the CD or your round object, trace two circles on the black board paper and cut. double-sided tape, trace and cut two circles on the white paper. Now using a half sheet of board paper, cut crosswise, place a long strip of double-sided tape at the top edge. From the bottom edge to the top. This is going to be the handle of the barbell. Now 
let's remove the double-sided tape and carefully secure our handlebar in place. Using your scissors, cut four lines on each end of the handle of the barbell and fold them outward. Take the two black circles and stick these to each end of the handle. These black circles will be our weights. Now using a marker, Write 10 kg or 10 kilograms on the white circles and glue them to the center of each weight. And there you have it, your very own craft barbell. Athletes and gym enthusiasts use dumbbells or barbells to help strengthen their muscles. Beginners usually start with a lightweight dumbbell, but over time, the weights get easier to carry. That is why when muscles are developed, people will try and lift heavier weights in order to build more muscle. Ooh, it sounds so much like our lesson, training for godliness. Yes, exactly. At first, it might be challenging, like avoiding video games to finish your homework even when mom isn't looking. But as we practice godliness, it also gets easier over time and we get to take on more challenging tasks. Not only that, we will also enjoy benefits on earth and in heaven. If you want your crafts to be featured in our service next week, you know what to do. Send us an email of your photo to our email address, kidsfort at victory.org.ph. All photos sent to our email will be shown online. We'll also give you one raffle entry for a craft raffle for the month of August. That's it for craft time for this week. See you next month, Crafty Kids. See you next month, everybody. Bye. See you, teacher Nikki. See you, Ben. Train well. You too, Ben. I shall. <laughs> like it.